I just need a programmer. I was contacted this week by an old acquaintance and he had a proposition for me. <laughs> I mean, who doesn't have that one happen, am I right? Hey, I hear you are a programmer. That's great because my buddy and I have an idea for a business. If I hear this phrase again, I swear I'm gonna lose my shit. I'm gonna lose it. I'm going to lose it completely. We have everything important figured out. All we need is a programmer to throw it together. On the surface, there isn't really anything unreasonable about the statement. These guys know what they want for an application. They just need the technical know-how to implement it. So quelling my, ur quelling my urge to say something flippant, I penned a reasonable response. What a nice fella. Cause I would say, ah, it sounds like you just need a programmer. You know what? I think I'm looking at two programmers, you, and your buddy sound like you guys have an excellent opportunity to make your dreams come true. Block. Uh, well, I have some other projects I'm involved in right now, but I'm always happy to take a look at something new and see if it's a good fit. If you want to do this strictly cash for a labor exchange, it would probably take X dollars per hour to get me interested in spending time on it. If, on the other hand, you don't have a startup capital and are interested in trading equity for this work, I'd probably have to see at least X percent cut of the company. And this option would, of course, be predicated on whether I felt the business was viable one I'd be interested in being invested in. Okay, yeah, fair. This this is a great way. It's the old, oh yeah, put your money where your mouth is business. That's, this is a great way. This is a, gr this is a great response, by the way. This is a great response. I'm loving it because we'll see. Are they really invested? Do they really think they're going to make money here? Although I, I really didn't expect him to be interested in meeting me at those terms. I expect maybe a counter offer or indication that he was expecting Y instead of X. What I actually got was a, uh, as a reply really, or surprised me a little. Hey, so we aren't really prepared to pay. I mean, there isn't that much to uh, to it. It's just a website with a database. I was hoping you could throw it together as a favor. Oh well, thanks anyways. I'm trying to figure out how do I how do you respond to this without using four letter curse words? Like, how do you respond to this without being like really upset? My brother in Christ, what you just asked me to do was to spend thousands of hours programming something for you as a favor. Please, gently and with much caution and care, fuck off. That's what I would do. I thought about this for a minute and I realized that implicit in the conversation are several assumptions or perhaps more accurately, conventionally perceived truths with regard to the craft of software development. There isn't much to it. Software is really easy to write. Right now, all I can see are all the memes with the guy that's a skeleton lying at the desk or the guy that's, 26 year olds, 26, one was like, I really love making websites. And it's like a picture of an old guy. It's like, Marcus, 26 years old. We have everything important figured out. In a business, the actual software is just the icing on the cake. Yes, yes, yes. By the way, if anyone ever approaches you with this, they look at software as a cost center, not a profit center. They're gonna, you know, if you have this mentality, you will always be... Anyone with this mentality is unfit to lead any sort of software. All we need is a programmer. Software developers are cogs in a machine or interchangeable components of an assembly line. Yes. So then uh, my question is this. Are these common assumptions within the software industry, or more importantly, are they accurate? Assumption one, software development is easy. This is certainly an opinion I'm used to dealing with, and I'm not sure most of you have experienced, and I'm sure most of you have experienced it as well. I think this is common in people that have never really done anything on a computer. They've just had people whip them up a WordPress site, and it feels like it's pretty fast, right? Oh yeah, you just go like da 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 da, and boom, it's done. They just don't realize that WordPress takes like literally, it has one million man hours put into it. They're just missing that entire section of things. How many people in chat right now have had someone say something similar to this to them? Software development is easy. Like it's not a big deal. It's not rocket science. I feel like it's a bit soul crushing. I'm not gonna lie to you. There's few things that piss me off more than when someone's like, ah, it's super easy. It's just like, it's simple. Yes. Easy. No. You know, running a marathon is simple. It really is. There's like nothing to it. Put one foot in front of the other until you're done. It's like left, right, left, right. I can say it in two words what you gotta do. Left, right. Done. Move forward. Doesn't mean it's easy. It's hard. It takes countless hours of training. And at the end of the day, you still might not be successful. You still may shit your pants on mile 16. All right, this isn't rocket science. All we need is, pro uh, is a programmer that does insert complicated feature here. Unfortunately, it's all too common to be under the illusion that software is about one-tenth as tough to build as it actually is. Now we could say that's not unreasonable to assume because a non-technical user, the user interface is the software. So they can only perceive one-tenth of, one of the full application anyway. Okay, fair. And they, they don't understand that underneath that 
user interface is React with 1900 use effects all built in to one component that's 400 lines long. Oh, so you design websites. Yeah, that is, that's a good one. Based on the fact I wouldn't be illogical to conclude that it's no big deal to just add another button there at the bottom that completely changes the workflow of the application. There is one misconception of the software industry that in my opinion can be 100% debunked. Software development is hard. We have tools to mitigate that or to make it harder, really. I think we've made more tools to make it harder than easier. There are good development methodologies that can keep us focused on what's important and good tools that can amplify our productivity. But at the end of the day, it's difficult to produce a, a good and simple software. Number two, software is just fluff compared to business. I think this one depends on the business. It really just depends on the business. Some Sometimes, some businesses, the business stuff is also really important. Relationships are really, really hard. You can't just make relationships. There is another attitude I've encountered more than a few times. And again, the surface value of the argument seems reasonable after all. Software can be made to do anything within reason, so it isn't really the software that we're selling. It's the business concept. It's the product or the service that's making us the money, not the code. Now, in a way, that's very true. Great software that has no utility is perhaps not great software after all. However, it would be wrong to take that statement and turn it around to say that a great business idea will succeed regardless of the software that acts as its delivery medium. Whether you are a product or a service company, the software is telling your story and your business will be judged on whether it is easy to use and doesn't break down. The greatest business in the world would not be able to overcome a milestone of bad software around its neck. This misconception is, in my opinion, false and getting falser. This is a good way to put it, and it also, in some sense, makes me sad a little bit. Because when someone builds a good piece of software for the time in which it was built, and it becomes the de facto standard, sometimes it gets shitty, but that's just what you have to use. Is falser a new bool type? It is. It's the third state. It's 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 boolean plus direction. I like I like this take though. I like this take uh, in general. Programmers are interchangeable, pluggable components. Full disclosure: I'm a programmer and I have a vested interest in this not being true. In some sense, they are. In some sense, you are, unless if you're specialized. I hate to I hate to tell you this. Nevertheless, I've experienced this my uh, opinion uh, many times during various searches. A company is experienced timeline problems, and the obvious solution is to get five more programmers. More manpower equal more progress. Okay, I didn't take it that way. More people does not mean problems get solved faster. And now, of course, this is biased opinion, but I th don't think all programmers are created equal. This is not, that's not a biased opinion. There is literally nothing biased about that opinion. Plenty of other bloggers have written on the subject of the rock star programmer, that mythical super productive hero who can carry a project on his back, and I am not entirely convinced that he exists. That being said, I do, I do think that the right people in software developer roles on a project can make a difference of at least an order of magnitude. So you do believe in the 10 Xer. I mean, I, there's definitely like 0.1 Xers. Two women can make a baby in half the time. It's true. It's just like Fortnite reviving. The more people you send to revive, the faster they revive, the more women on one baby makes a baby grow faster. We're not special and generally replaceable, but we're skilled and valuable. That's a good way to put it, Ryan. That's a good way to put it. Software engineers are replaceable. Like, it depends on the specificity of what you do. So like a good programmer that has aligned themselves well I think is mostly concerned about internal tooling at a job. Like if you're just building out the UI, you are more replaceable. If you are building out the UI and developing ways for other people to become better at the job and developing tools and things like that, you are more worthwhile to that company. You have another skill set that's kind of showing. Personal opinion. A good React dev could save his job by making 600 use effects in one file. This is true. Kind of like when they made the map editor for the original Doom. Yeah. Having yourself, like internal tooling is extremely important. If if you ever want to become very valuable, knowing internal tooling and being very good at it is an extremely valuable thing. The ability to navigate many different teams is important. Obviously, this depends on the size of your company. If you're a two-man shop, not very good right? Example, okay, at my current job, we have an entire automation pipeline that spins off Jenkins machines and all that. We have device reservation things. We have a service to run something to run tests. To be able to learn all of those, put them into a something simple and to kind of bring understanding to it. It makes, you know, makes sense. A two-man shop can't make a baby. Pick, you're onto something there. I, want, I demand a Haskell-based white paper tomorrow on this. What do you think? Has the software industry changed to the point where the above assumptions can become more viable? I obviously, I think this is, I think the thing is, is that you can't expect people. It's just like any other technical profession. I can't understand why it takes X amount of time to fix my car. I can't. To me, it seems simple. It's like, why isn't it done in a day? It's because I simply don't understand the problem. Same with video editing. Why can't you edit videos faster? 
Why can't you do this? Why does that have to take this much time? I just simply don't understand it. You don't understand what it takes to do something. And so I think this is this is just true in any arena. The more internal specific knowledge you have, the less replaceable you become. That's right. Experience is what is not replaceable. By the way, like the current thing I'm doing at my job right now is trying to understand our entire testing pipeline. And it's it's just been really, really difficult. And the thing is, is that the last person who did it quit and moved on, which means that we just have a huge gap in knowledge. And it's just a great way to make, you know, it's a great way to make yourself valuable is to learn these things, rewrite it. I'm not going to rewrite it. I hope not to rewrite anything. Honestly, I just hope to identify what's wrong with it and move on. And that's because, and what, what did I do with all that? Well, that's exactly why I created this, this just gigantic, ridiculous program to try to bring some order so I can come up with some piece of data to say, hey, here are some things wrong with what's going on right here, okay? I have 696 lines of code just to identify errors because we don't have structured logging. So I'm going to not only say, here's what's going on, also, we should create structured logging right? Like that's not crazy. It's a really simple, uh, it's a really simple change that everybody can be on top of that everybody can be a part of. And so you just, you just slowly move the ball forward in these types of projects where you make meaningful changes. It's fun. I actually really, really like it. I actually really, really like it because at the end of the day, you get the chance to do something in which is really, really difficult or really, really boring, depending on how you look at it. And attitude totally changes your perception about the problem. I'm loving it because I'm like, all right, no one's been successful here at this. We obviously have problems. A lot of really great technology and a lot of really great decisions have all been made, but also some problems of just integration and what's going wrong and how to bring order to the chaos. So I'm very excited about, like, let's bring order to something that hasn't done it. Instead of being like, gosh, all these people screwed up, right? Like, you can totally take it however you want to take it. I think there's something just really amazing about being super positive and all that and just being like, let's like, let's get in there. Let's, let's make something amazing that everybody loves because at the end of the day, what is really awesome? What is more awesome than when you work at a company and an internal tool is just stellar, just works. It's easy to use. It has a really great command line interface and it also has a nice website. You know, like really good internal tools are just awesome. They're just awesome. Sex with a woman. <laughs> thank you for, thank you Red Anthrax for the insightful and concise observation to kind of go along with this discussion. I work on internal tools with a sexy live view website. See, that's awesome. That's super, super good. I want to improve our team tooling so bad, but it's a hard topic to debate due to time constraints. This is also a really hard one. Since we're kind of, I know this this is about, you know, these things, but honestly, I think it's more interesting to talk about what makes you valuable. Like just real talk. If you want to be perceived as valuable at your job, if you want to be able to uh, make sure that you have kind of longevity in your career, take a moment and think, what does everybody need here? What are the things that this team, this organization, or these like connected organizations struggle with? How can I write up a doc, show what is wrong, and propose a solution? Don't just say what's wrong, don't blame anybody. Just simply come up with an idea. But the thing is, is that often the problem always looks like this, is that you have to first say why whatever you're dealing with is wrong. And you can't do something based off of feeling. You know, I really think using solid would be better than react. Like that ship has probably already sailed. You're probably gonna lose that fight. You gotta think of something a bit more useful. Being part of the solution instead of the problem is such a good and seemingly obvious advice, yet so many people keep messing it up. It's very, it's very hard to do it right. That's the hard part is it's extremely hard to do that correctly. And what I mean by that is that it's very, very easy as time goes on to become a bit more bitter. Look for customer complaint requests that can uh, back up your proposal. Yeah, that's actually a really good way to do it. Like anything that you can find that's tangible. And so for me, like I was showing earlier, it's error rate. What are we erroring and why? Like just combing through literally thousands of logs. I found this one. Sometimes our node process crashes on e write pipe or e, uh, write e pipe. Why? I don't know, but it's just something to understand that's like out there. It's just out there and nobody has a category for it. So it's like, I'm gonna bring a very comprehensive view into what is happening and then make a very comprehensive proposal for what I think is a good short-term solution. Not a great 
long-term solution, right? Because you don't always have to have long-term solutions. Long-term solutions can be part two. Part one is how do we fix the mess? Part two is how do we create a situation in which this mess can't exist? Or better yet, how do we create a situation that addresses all of the messes? And these aren't, by the way, none of those logs are prod. Those are all testing environment logs. So this, it's just internal machine, uh, machinery, right? If I know I'm valuable, only devs that know anything about one of our backends, the second most senior developer, but the least paid, how should I handle demanding a raise? Here's the deal. If a company is underpaying you, you know it, and you believe you have some level of, hey, this is, uh, this is what is happening. For me, it's really hard to want to stay at that job because that means they don't value value you, they value your work only. I would strongly suggest using your current experience as a way to leverage a good position elsewhere. And I wouldn't even try for a competing offer. I know people are saying competing offers are a good way. Competing offers are a great way to show that you have more value, but competing offers are also a great way for you to build a lot of angst and anxiety against you in such a way that, yeah, they'll be like, oh yeah, we really love you. Come on in. They'll pay you more. And then at the end of the day, in six months, you're going to get your ass fired because you just put a huge target on your back. I don't often like using offers as a way to leverage more pay. Now you can try just going to your boss. If you have a good, if you have good relationship and just say, Hey, I feel like I'm being really underpaid. Can you please review this for me? Cause I I've been delivering all this value. Give your big checklist and be like, and yet I feel like I'm not being paid adequately for this. I want to stay here. I really enjoy my job and I would like to continue to do great work for you guys. And if that doesn't make them go, Oh yeah, we've screwed up here. I'm sorry. You just got to go. If you get a better offer, take it. Never, uh, never take the counter. I never take the counter. I feel like the counter is very, very dangerous, right? I mean, it's good. If you have a good relationship with your boss, you should be able to say these things to him. I, I say things that are honest to my boss because I want I want a good relationship and having a good relationship requires danger and danger requires saying things that can be difficult. You have to be okay with that. You just have to be okay with that. Uh, but the nice part is that you can counter in other relationships. And what I mean by that is that if you are going to a place and they offer you something that's not good enough, you can most certainly counter them, right? Because you're, you're still establishing the baseline. And so like when Google offered me 10% less pay than I was getting paid at Netflix, I said, no, you need to improve it. And they said, no, this is a starting point. I want you to think about this as a starting point where you will jump ahead. And I said, I am thinking of it as a starting point, 10% less than where I'm currently at. That's how I'm looking at it. No. They said no. I said no. We called it a day. It was easy. I would measure your value at a company by how much ability you have to navigate through your company and how many things you've helped deliver that have brought value to other engineers, right? To me, that's a huge thing because if you have, if you have helped deliver brought order to just chaos, it's always a great sign. Doesn't the Netflix have a 100% match policy if a company's out? Yes, so Netflix encourages you to go out and interview. So it's different. So since the company has the culture to tell you to go out and interview, that's different. And I think that that, that that makes it, it makes it a little bit, it makes it safe. Trash Des knows this. I'm not worried about telling my boss about a counter because that's just what Netflix will do. They're like, okay, hey, you proved your point. Sure. I quit two weeks ago because of a great opportunity presented itself, allowing me to move to a country of my dreams. I had a wonderful relationship with my manager. My hearth sank, telling him, oh man, I hate when my hearth sinks. Uh, now, my, my fireplace. Now, looking back, I know if I just asked for a raise, I would have been a yes. Decision wasn't about money, though. I would say develop your relationship with that person you report to. Yeah, you should try to develop that relationship because at the end of the day, if you have a good relationship with your boss, if things are, if you're getting into some s set of trouble, your boss will go, ah, you know, I really like, I really like this person. I'm going to work with them, right? They're going to be more desiring to work with you. But if you're always kind of like just a dick in general, guess what? When something isn't going good, guess who's not going to be like, ah, you know, let's, let's, let's have a nice heart. Let's have a nice heart to heart and kind of talk through these problems. You're not going to get that. The name. I've only fell. I've, I've only ever left one job over money. I've only left I don't think I've, I've only left one job over money as well. A gin.